Hello viewers, welcome back to Labi Premium Consult. In today's video, we are going to look at caution on replacement, non-replacement, and independent probability. So I read, Ghana Standards Authority collected 20 electric bulbs from J&J Limited for testing, and five of them were defective. If three bulbs are selected one after the other, what is the probability that all the three bulbs are defective? I. Assuming a sampling without replacement, I, I assume sampling with replacement. Then the C part is saying that a firm is independently working on two separate jobs. There is a probability of 0.4 the first job will be completed on time and 0.7 that the second job will be completed on time. Find the probability that I, just one job is completed on time, I, I, at least one job is completed on time. Okay, so back to the B part, we are asked to find what is the probability that all the three bulbs are defective, taking into account sampling with that replacement and sampling with replacement. So before that, let us have the parameters. So we know the total sample space in this question was what, 20. So we can say that number of what, the sample space or the sample collected is equal to what, 20, okay? And we also know that the number of defective words, bulbs in this case, number of defective bulbs in this case, I'll call it as well B with what a subscript D to be equal to what 5 after the testing. And then what's going to be the non-defective? So the non-defective are represented as what B, that's number of bulbs with non-defective with a bar on top to be equal to. So we know the total sample space was 20. So I'll subtract what the defective from it, and that's going to give me a figure of what 15. Okay, good. But then let's talk about the probability. So, what is the probability that a ball is a defective word, bulb? A defective bulb. So, in that case, we can say that the probability that a bulb is defective, a bulb is defective, is going to be five out of the total what sample bulb that was selected, which is what 20. Likewise, if we want to find a probability that a bulb is non-defective, that is going to be probability of what? Bulb with a bar on top, that is going to give us what? 15 out of what? 20. So that is a probability that a bulb is defective and probability that a bulb is what? Non-defective. Okay, so now the first condition here is we have to assume sampling without what? Replacement. With that replacement means that once that defective ball is selected, means that the total defective ball in the total sample is going to reduce, and therefore the total sample is also going to what reduce. The total sample ball collected is also going to what reduce. So that is the meaning of what sampling without what replacement. And here is the case that the number of water we selected to find the probability was what? number of bulbs we selected to find the probability is what three. So mean that once we select one particular bulb with a defective bulb, it reduces the total defective bulb. Like what also we do the total or samples, which is what? 20. I hope that is fine. So in this case, we come back to our I part of the question. The probability that all the bulbs are defective, taking into account what? A sampling without what? Replacement. So that's going to be the probability of what? Defective bulbs. All the three defective bulbs, right? So let me have three here. All the defective bulbs without what replacement. So that's going to give us straight away. That's going to give us that's going to give us five out of what twenty. So immediately I select the first ball. That means that the defective bulb is what reduced to what four, and the total sample is also reduced to what nineteen. So I'll multiply by the second ball selected because we're told that. We have to find a probability that all the three defective balls are what? All the three balls are defective. So the number of balls, balls that we were told in this question was what? Three. Okay. So the next one is going to be what? Four out of what? Nineteen. And then it follows to the last ball that we want to find a probability is what? So that's going to give us three out of what? Eighteen. So per your calculation, you should be able to arrive at one out of what? 114 that is one out of 114 and then you are done so that is without replacement 
but with replacement means that immediately we select that ball immediately we select that ball that ball is still replaced again once that ball is selected it's being replaced once again once that ball is selected it's being replaced once again so that would mean that the object or the item under consideration or under interest once that item is selected is being replaced it means that it doesn't reduce likewise the total sample space also won't what reduce and since we are talking about defective ball once we select one defective ball with replacement the total defective ball remain the same likewise the total sample space also what remains what the same is that okay so that is the idea about what with replacement so since we are considering what three bulbs to be defective then the probability that three bulbs were defective with replacement is going to give us what five out of what 20 and since it's replacement maybe we select this first ball we still replace so mean that the defective ball won't reduce in terms of number likewise the total sample space also won't reduce in terms of what the number so the second one is going to be the same thing as what five out of what 20 and follow suit to replace and the third one is going to be the same thing as what five out of what 20 so that will primarily give us so here we can say here is going to be five what cube here is going to be divided by 20 what cube so you know you should be able to arrive at a figure of one out of what 64. so let's move on to the c part of the question here c so that one too here we have what two separate jobs so it is an independent probability we have two separate jobs in which the probability of one being completed on time or the first job being completed on time 0 0.4 and the second job being completed on time is also 0.7 and then we are asked to find the probability that just one job is completed on time so this is going to be so here we're going to form a table here to tell us that we have what to tell us that we have job completed on time job completed completed on time and job not completed not completed on time all right and then we have the probability for the jobs so we have so the first job what is the first job i'll call it as what j1 j1 then the second job i'll call it as what j2 as second job so the probability that the first job completed on time is going to be what 0 0.4 per the question right that is 0 0.4 and then the second one is what 0 0.7 so the chance that it will be completed on time means that you subtract the probability that you complete on time from what the total probability is what one and that's going to give us here for the first job to 0 0.6 and that of the 0 0.7 is going to fetch as 0 0.3 okay so these are table so now back to the first question we are saying that i find the probability that just one job is what completed on time so since here we don't know whether it's job one that is completed on time or job two that is completed on time we are going to assume that each has a chance of what occurring and as such we are going to go by that so since each has a chance of occurring it's going to be that it can be job one that is completed on time and the other way around job two wasn't completed on time or it can be that job two was completed on time but job one wasn't completed on time so that is how the probability is going to, what, to be since each job has an equal chance of being completed on what on time okay so you're going to tell us that the probability that just one job completed on time is going to be is going to be so p is going to be this is how it's going to be it's going to be job one job one right which is completed on time intersection job two so if job one is completed on time means that job two isn't completed on, on time so that's going to be job two not completed on time with your bar on top here okay or it can be that the probability that job one didn't completed on time okay but job two completed on what on time 
since all the two jobs have equal chance of what being what completed on time or being selected so in this case we are going to say that therefore let's look at the probability that job one completed on time is what 0 0.4 so we'll pick that one here tell us that multiple bracket 0 0.4 and then multiply by the probability that job two didn't complete on time is going to be what 0 point what three so we're going to have that one so here 0 0.3 so all in probability means what addition so you add plus so the probability that job one didn't complete on time is going to give us what 0 0.6 okay so we're going to have here to be 0 0.6 and then multiply by the probability that job two completed on time so it's going to give us 0 0.7 0 0.7 so at the end of the day when you multiply this, it's going to get 0 0.12 plus here it's going to fetch you 0 0.42 and that should fetch you a total of 0 0.54. So there's a chance that just one job was completed on time since the two jobs have an equal chance of what com being completed on time or equal chance of what's happening. Is that okay? So that is the I part of this question. So the I is saying that at least one job is what completed on time. So here at least two, here two, or the two jobs have an equal chance of what occurring. But one thing that we need to know when it comes to at least situation here is that immediately we said at least of any probability question, then it means that it can be presented in a mathematical expression as this x is greater than or equal to what n. At least means a number and above. A number and above. So it means that it can be one or above what one. In terms of completion, it can be one or above one. I hope that is fine. So in terms of completion, can get at least one job being completed right or it can be what above one so here you're gonna have a number of sets right that at least within the set you must have at least one job completed and since we have two jobs here these are how the set is going to be they're going to tell us that if we are we are assuming or we think that the chance that job one occurring is high then we are going to say that J1 probability that J1 occurring, J1 occurring, right, will permit that J2 won't occur. So that's going to be intersection. What probability that J2 won't occur with your bar on top, right? Or it can be it can be that the probability that J2 occurring will permit that J1 won't occur. That's job one of the first job won't occur. So hive in one year. Or it can be that all the jobs will occur at the same time. All the two jobs will be completed or occur at the same time. So that's going to give us what? J1 intersection J2. So that is the at least how the at least actually is being applied in probability. All right? So it means that at least within each set here, you must have one job that has a chance of what? Completion on time. So immediately one is completed means that other job or the other job won't be completed on time and that's how you go by the the intersection or the end words approach so here that will means that you're gonna have the j1 here the j1 that's job one completed and job two not completed is here right so we can pick this value straight away here so we can see that here is going to give us what 0 0.12 all means addition right so you have your plus here so that of j2 completed and j1 not completed too can also be taken from here as what 0 0.42 plus but we don't know that of what the probability that j1 and j2 okay at the same time complete at the same time so that one is going to work that one out so that one to come back to our table that is what 0 0.4 and 0 0.7 so we're going to have here to be 0 0.4 multiplying 0 0.7 okay and that's going to give us so you're gonna have here to be 1.2, 0 0.42, then here you're going to give us 0 0.28. So when you add or you should be able to arrive at 0 0.82. So there's a probability that at least one job is completed. But here we also have a simplest way of solving at least situation in probability. You can say that since here, since here within each say we have at least one job. That will be completed on time. Why don't we think of a situation where we have 
a set that contains a job that will be completed on time at all. So we can also think of where the, none of the job none of the job is completed or on time. So we can also think of that situation. So if we think that none of the job wouldn't be completed on time, then that probability, when it's subtracted from one, it should be able to fetch us at least one job will be completed on what on time. So that is another way of dealing with this. So I call it as what well the alternative or approach or or the approach. So here the probability that at least one job wouldn't be completed on time, at least one job being completed on time is going to give us what one minus the probability that none of the jobs none of the jobs will be completed on time. All right. So in this case, you are going to say that one minus. So we come back to our table. What is the probability that none of the two jobs completed on time? That is what zero point six and what zero point three. Okay. So it's going to be and intersection related so that's going to give us 0 0.6 multiplying 0 0.3 and here we're going to have here to be what 1 minus so 0 0.3 multiplying 0. 0 0.6 multiplying 0 0.3 is going to fetch in what 0 0.18 and maybe subtract 0 0.18 from 1 it should be able to arrive at 0 0.82 and you can clearly see that 0 0.82 here is the same thing as 0 0.82 here so either you go by this approach all right, or you go by this approach by subtracting the chance that none of the events in this case won't happen from the total probability of one, and that will fetch you the at least situation. So that is that with the issue about replacement, non replacement, and independent what probability. So let's take note of that. So thanks for watching. If it was really helpful to you. Please go ahead to smash the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel so that you can get daily updates on this video. And you can also follow me on what Instagram at Labby Premium, on Facebook at Labby Premium Consult so that you get more updates on educational content. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.